June 1934, Hitler has been German Chancellor for 17 months. He had total control over Germany but lived in constant fear of assassination and opposition. He decided to eliminate any and all threats. What followed next became known as the Knights of the Long Knives. Hitler had a growing list of threats, such as rival from within the Nazi party itself, generals trying to split the party, but his biggest threat was someone close to him, Ernst Röhm. Ernst Röhm was a man that Hitler admired, admired for his tactical prowess, as well as his extreme loyalty to the Nazi party. It is said that more than any other person, Röhm was responsible for Hitler's rise to power. But what went wrong? After Hitler rose to chancellorship in 1933, he turned his sights toward his top supporters. From there he noticed that Rom himself was growing in power. Not only was he the leader of the SA, but there were real possibilities of the SA absorbing the National German Army, increasing their power even further. Adding on to that, the SA were already growing restless from the lack of recognition and respect for the role they had played. They felt as if Hitler casted him aside as he grew in power. There were real possibilities that if the stars aligned, Ernst Röhm could have rose past Hitler himself in power and status in the Nazi party. Moreover, many Nazi party members already believed that Röhm was the true party leader. Now we see why Hitler thought this was an issue that needed solving. While Röhm could drastically grow in power, Hitler's power was quite limited. While he is the Chancellor of Germany, German President Paul von Hindenburg could easily take that all away. Hitler, knowing this, wanted to merge the position of chancellorship with presidentship, effectively giving him full control of Germany, basically becoming a dictator. For this to happen, Hitler would need to gain the full support from the official German army and destroy or completely control the SA. Fortunately, Lady Luck was good to Hitler. On April 11, 1934, Hitler met with General Werner von Blumberg in secret to strike a deal. There were two terms to this deal. Firstly, Hitler would have to completely destroy the SA, and secondly, once the first term has been completed, upon the passing of German President Paul von Hindenburg, the official German army will completely support Hitler. This was when Hitler began plotting. In early June 1934, Hitler, Heydrich and Göring began compiling a list. This list would later be known as the Reich List of Unwanted Persons. It contained the names of those who would be executed. This list and specific instructions were then sent to the secret polices all over Germany. The operation was codenamed Hummingbird. From there, Hitler would order all the SA leaders to meet in the Hassenbauer Hotel, setting up a trap. On June 30th, 1934, Hitler and a sizable group of SS men arrived at the Hassenbauer Hotel. At around 6 a.m., Hitler and his men apprehended Ernst Röhm and his deputy. The deputy in question was immediately taken outside and shot while Rom was given options. He had the options to commit suicide, but he refused. Ernst Rom was then taken to the Stadelheim prison and shot, thus beginning the Night of the Long Knives. Subsequently, around 200 other SA leaders were arrested and executed, with most of the execution occurring at the Stadelheim prison or at another site southeast of Berlin. However, SA leaders and members were not the only one executed. Notable names include Kurt von Schleicher, the former German Chancellor, Gregor Strasser, a high-ranking Nazi figure, Edgar Jung, a prominent conservative, and Ferdinand von Bredow, a German general and political figure. The executions would continue until the 2nd of July, when the SA finally collapsed, leading to the SS having full control over Germany. Hitler, after the event, even received a letter of gratitude from President von Hindenburg. The events of the Night of the Long Knives were not public until the 13th of July, when Hitler gave a public address. In this address, he downplayed the event, stating that only 61 were executed, 13 were shot, and that three committed suicide, when in truth, the death toll ranged from 400 to 1,000. 